happy Friday, everybody. Mark again here at Weatherman Plus. Now, we got some big stories that's coming right around the corner. Plus, we have the snowstorm for today. We got the flooding come across Florida for your racing as well as you go through tomorrow and Sunday. And then we got the atmospheric river that's coming through on the West Coast as well, starting for tomorrow. Plus, I'll show you what you can expect as we go into March. Because severe weather is going to start ramping up, especially with the outlook that just got posted. So you can see with HRRR, as you go through noontime, you're starting to get some snow for Illinois, for Indiana, all the way till 5 p.m. Then it carries all even along towards Ohio, western Pennsylvania, West Virginia, as you go towards midnight. Then as you go overnight, look at it, forming up right off the coast for Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey, eastern Pennsylvania, getting in on it, even Long Island, all night, all morning long, then pulling away. Bringing some good snowfall with that. And all together, bringing a three to five swath all the way across from eastern Missouri, across Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, northern Kentucky, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey, Long Island, New York, and a little bit of Connecticut. A big swath of three to five, maybe in some places getting six or seven. And I know there's people out there that still want their snowfall. Believe me, I do care. Link is in the description so you can go zoom in and see how much snowfall is predicted for you to get out of this snowstorm. Now, National Weather Service is showing all the way till Monday. I can go a little bit further in H triple R. You can start adding up more snow for the intercoastal northeast, mostly for New York and for the UP of Michigan. This is because you're gonna have these few little storms that's gonna keep zinging through Canada, bringing us some tail whips of snow. But I'm sure it's gonna pick up to some heavy snow very soon for the Northeast. Shown by National Weather Service model, it will build up to that three to five swath, not going all the way across towards Long Island. But then when you get that next system that pulls through Canada, it's gonna add up more for the UP, Northern Michigan, and the intercoastal Northeast, mostly Western Pennsylvania and Western New York. A lot of heavy snow still coming from multiple people, but you can see how some people are just going to be totally missed, maybe an inch. But then we're about to go on some crazy and extreme patterns. So let me show you the new data that has come out. So when you look at your Arctic oscillation, you see the cold air is retracting back, but you see it is coming in for a quick dip as you go through the 20s. Now the green line is your average. So you can see it does dip in the models are hitting that maybe a little bit deeper but it does dip in and then it gradually comes in with that cold air as we go through march right back in again now you can also see on your epo your east pacific oscillation your jet stream on the west coast is going to start going into a high ridge at this time all the way into the beginning of march that would put a trough on the east side of the US because you got a ridge on the opposite side on the west side. So just so you know what you're looking at, when you look at a PNA, a Pacific North American pattern, when you go into a positive phase, it brings that warmer pattern on the west coast, that high EPO, that high ridge, bringing that trough, bringing cooler air potentially with it and building up these front induced storms. So when you look at your PNA, Pacific North American pattern, you see we stay in this positive pattern all the way until the 20s when we're getting this potential snow into the northeast. This is bringing that high ridge on the west, is bringing that cold trough in the northeast, potentially bringing snow. Then it's going to go to an extreme negative PNA pattern all the way until the 6th, maybe even the 10th of March. So it's going to change. So as you're getting this cold air coming into the east coast with this high ridge, then it's going to change into a deep trough on the west coast and a high ridge on the east coast because you have a big high pressure building up. Then it's going to go back the other way. And you can see that here, how you go into that negative phase. You get that trough of cooler air coming in on the west side of the U.S. Remember I showed y'all it's going to be below average on the west, above average towards the east. I'll show you again. And it brings that high ridge towards the east because it brings warmer conditions, a high pressure setting up. And it just changes your pattern with your PNA. So you can see this here. When you look at your temperature anomaly, you can see this with the euro. Your below average temperature is moving through. And as you go through the 20s, it's still going to be there. Still got the cool air. This is still bringing you the chance for the snow. That's why you must know this. But you see the below average starts moving in from the west coast. And the above average starts raising up as we go into the end of February, the very beginning of March. So here you are. You're looking at that negative PNA. You got that below average, the cold air on the west coast. You got that high ridge, that above average on the east coast. 
So that's the pattern as we're going into March. And this is going to kick off our severe weather. I will show you. And as you go towards the middle of March, that above average pattern will leave and a below average pattern, more cooler temperatures will start kicking in for March. We even have a risk for a heavy snow from the 23rd all the way through the end of the month over here from Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, Utah, Colorado, and the higher elevations of Washington, Oregon, and California. So definitely the higher elevations, it's gonna see some good snow. The UP of Michigan, Western and Northern Michigan, also for the Northeast. From the 23rd through the 25th, a slight chance for heavy snow to start adding up. Now this amount will change because it's literally getting past five days, but you can see with the Euro, as you go on, it starts adding up to some snow on the intercoastal, and then you have the ones along the coast, including that storm that you're getting now. So this is all extra added to it. Now the GFS is showing the heavy snow coming across the higher elevations across the west. It's showing snow coming across the intercoastal northeast. Matter of fact, heavy snowfall coming down, adding up to almost a foot for a lot of y'all. And when you look at a Canadian, it's showing almost the same thing in both locations. So those two are at an agreement kind of on a trend right now. It's too early to say it's factual, but I will keep my eye on them. Because when we go to the ensembles, it's literally the other way around. When you look at the GFS ensembles, control member is showing it would be pretty much what the Euro is showing. And when you go to the Euro ensembles, it's showing almost what GFS is showing. Matter of fact, it's showing that it's either going to be a banger or a bust, one or the other. But either way, look. Most of them is showing a lot of snow is coming that way. Plus, we have favorable environment forming up from the 16th all the way past the 21st. And not just the GFS, you can see it on the Euro as well. A lot of favorable environment in that region at that time for storms to strengthen. Showing that it would be most favorable over here for the Eastern Pacific going a little bit into the Western Gulf. But then past that, it will start transitioning over towards the Atlantic, and that's where your favorable environment is going to travel. Showing in five days, you're going to start getting this chance for this low pressure to form. Most of them showing it will form out into the Atlantic. At the same time, while we're getting all that favorable environment, we're going into a positive PNA where we're going to go into a trough. So, this is going to bring more storms over that way. Showing this one will strengthen and go out into the Atlantic but also showing this one will strengthen as well, bringing you the chances for the snow and a strong nor'easter. So I'm gonna show you all this information right here on the Ural. So here's your snowstorm going out, here's your cold air coming in, cause we're in the positive PNA, and you'll see that leave out. Bam, the cold air has left. Now we're going into this high ridge with this trough, the high ridge on the west coast. Remember, that high ridge is going to be there. But you can also see that as that storm starts building up and you get in that favorable environment, we're going to start going into our next pattern where you're going to get that high pressure building up. And that's what you get is you get the high pressure building up, but it don't last long before we go right back into a positive PNA and the cold air comes right back again. So here comes the cold air right back down again as we get that next swooping of cold air bringing another potential snowstorm and a strong one because we have a lot of favorable environment over there at that time. This is still days away. This is still six days away from this storm forming up. Now the snowfall ratings are different with each one. You can see with GFS is bringing multiple Little storms coming across from Canada. Then we get that favorable environment, and here it comes. Bam, it starts going a little northern. You see how it hits northern? The tail whip hits it. We get some rain. We get a little bit of snow. Only a little bit adds up. Then another one comes, and another one comes. It's just over and over pattern. And you can see this on the 6Z update as well. Still there showing multiple storms. Just keep aiming for the northeast, heading into Canada, but building up chances for storms to grow as we go into the 20s, potentially bringing heavy snowfall with that as that comes across, as we go back into that positive PNA of cold air coming back. Right now, the Ural sees the same thing, except it takes it to where it's not quite meeting up 
good enough with the temperatures and it brings some snow but not really a strong system just yet like i said it's still at least six days away and the second one doesn't carry anything with it so it's still six days away i will keep you updated but we do have warnings out for that area already i think some of the models will change the data is showing the cold air is going to gradually start coming back in Plus, being in a positive PNA will bring the cold air back towards the Great Lakes and the Northeast. And you can see the rainfall will start adding up as you go through Sunday in Florida and for the West Coast, adding up on the atmospheric river. You see how it just adds up from all that rainfall. And a lot of heavy rainfall starting to add up on the atmospheric river through California all the way until the 20s. Just keep on flowing through. Then we got that storm coming that we got to watch. Now, this was released yesterday by NOAA. This year, temperatures going into March. So you're looking at below average over here towards Arizona and New Mexico, western Texas, all across until Georgia, Panama, Florida. But it's going to be stronger for southeastern Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Panama, Florida for below average temperatures. Above average in the northeast and the northwest. Now, this is what's concerning. You look at your precipitation, you're above average over the southeast over here for the west coast as well going to the central u.s so what you're looking at here is you got some storms that's going to be forming up why are you getting this precipitation flowing in this direction why you have cooler air drier air behind that system also in the south so you over here you have your storms forming up you got your precipitation coming in this direction and you got your dry air right behind this now this is concerning because this shows you what you're looking for on your pattern so when you go to look at your seasonal outlook march april and may and if you just draw this right here draw the little precipitation arrows coming up like this this right here is your dry air moving in right behind this so what you got is your storm system forming up right here you got dry air, the dry line moving behind it. You got the warm gulf moisture. And right here, you got your tornado alley that's going to be forming from the severe weather from these two kicking in. And if we get cooler air aloft, it's going to help strengthen these storms as well. So that's what I see when I see that pattern. It looks very concerning. And the last graphic I have for you that was released yesterday is your drought. So if you look at everywhere in the brown, this is where drought is going to persist. Plus, if you look everywhere in all of this yellow, drought development is likely for the next couple of months. This also includes by Hawaii and Puerto Rico. You have drought development likely in the yellow and you got drought persisting in the brown. And your drought removal will be happening for the U.S. Virgin Islands. Thank you again for your time, everybody. I hope this helps you understand somewhat what kind of pattern we're about to go into. I will keep you updated. Make sure you like the video if this video has helped you in any way. Make sure to subscribe if you like the content. And before y'all go, James 3, 7 through 14. It is proof that we are broken, but we can work on it. For every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and have been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessings and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Doeth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine, figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh water? Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not, and lie not against the truth. Amen. For we all do it, and we all need to work on it. For we bless people 
with our mouth. And with that very same mouth, we curse others. And people are God's creation. We shouldn't damn or curse anything that is God's creation. That's where our fault lies. That's where we're broken. I wish best for every single one of y'all. Remember, all glory always goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And hope he always keeps you safe every day of your life, you and your family, <laughs> and forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. I'll see you again on Sunday morning.